Oh, hey, what's going on, everybody? I hit the button. What happened? Oh. <laughs> All right, we're back. We're good now. We're good. Hold on. Let's just let's just let's just do this whole thing all over again. Ready? Let's go back to the intro. Okay, bye, bye, everybody. We'll, we'll do this again. <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> Professional live stream for you right here. <laughs> so what I was saying, what I was saying is, we're doing this off the cuff, right? And you got that idea yeah. right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> I think we made that quite clear, yeah? We did. We did. <laughs> like, just my computer unplugged at one point. I m messed everything up on the live stream at another point. And Tom's just Tom. So we're, we're doing great. We're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. if, you, if you missed what I said before, which you definitely did because the audio was off, um, <laughs> It was that we're going to be discussing Jurassic World Dominion, the fact that it returned uh, to filming and production. We're going to discuss spoilers, but not necessarily these spoilers. We're going to discuss what it means to be sharing them, uh, that kind of conversation. Uh, Tom sp spoiled his thing with a, a visual, you know, you, you went like this. You went, hey, there it is. Um, so we're going to be discussing these two things that you just saw. Um, and, <laughs> and maybe we'll touch on... Uh, 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 the Jurassic World section out at uh, Universal Studios Beijing. Uh, there's been some stuff coming out of there. So if anybody else has any ideas or topics they want to hear, uh, go ahead, let us know in the comments. I asked everybody what you want to hear. Um, hopefully you can hear us I think now. I they want to hear us, good. Brad. That's kind of the main thing. <laughs> yes, okay. We fixed it. It's all good. <laughs> Thank you for, for sticking it out uh, during this afternoon or nighttime for you, Tom. Um so, mm -hmm. where are we starting? What did, what did I say we were talking about? Oh, Jurassic World Dominion started filming. So, I, I talked a lot about this uh, on the podcast uh, for the Jurassic Wire, and then a lot of people were asking about it in the Jurassic Mailbag as well. Uh, you know, the movie starts filming, or, you know, production restarts again. Uh, how, how confident are you right now with this whole thing? Um, you know, because you're kind of, like, right in the thick of it being out that way. Uh I don't. I don't want to yeah. generalize exactly where, but like it's. It's you know you're out that direction. I think, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. what's it like over there? Are you confident with the production going to task right now? Uh, what are you thinking? Um. Okay. So it's it's interesting. The more we kind of hear, the more I'm kind of like, uh, maybe it's going to be all right. Um. So Colin recently said, I think it was in Empire, uh, that all of the sequences they've shot so far were dinosaur heavy. So they've had a lot of time to kind of work on the CGI and really drill it down, which mm -hmm. I think is good. Um, but I am worried that things, you know, potentially we're not out of the woods yet. I mean, in the UK today, they introduced a bit of a stimulus package, which is designed to encourage people to get out a little bit more, kind of get spending on the high street a little bit more. But I'm worried that with that, maybe we're going to see things go back the other way and maybe see the R rate go back up. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think like with anything at the moment, we need to be careful. Um, and obviously priority, we want the production crew to stay safe, stay healthy, stay Jurassic <laughs> um, purely. <laughs> so <laughs> we are able to get lots and lots more kind of content from them in the future. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more optimistic than I have been. Um, but I still think we shouldn't be aiming for next year as a release date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that seems uh, that seems uh, acceptable there. I, I I don't know why they would still try to rush that, but um, I'm accepting cookies here so I can bring up this because uh, I I forgot that is one of the things that I wanted to uh, bring up to discuss here. Where is it? here it is? Okay, so you said it was. Uh, should be this article from a Empire. Um, yeah. So Colin talked about coming back. And let's see here. He says, for many of us, Dominion was already the biggest creative challenge of our lives before the lockdown. Uh, the shooting schedule uh, really worked to our advantage. The first four weeks we put to film were mostly sequences with dinosaurs in them. So that allowed us to get a head start on the VFX and work workshop some of the newer elements without the pressure of a looming deadline. Okay, so um, there we go. Get it more centered there for you. Um so that's pretty interesting. The fact that, uh, you know, 
and you can see it there in the uh, video as well, is uh, this picture here of um, Colin mm -hmm. and Isabella Sermon. I believe it's her birthday today. So happy birthday, Isabella. Um, so yeah, it is. Yeah. So this is kind of the stuff that we've seen so far is just these snowy images. Uh, we've seen a few things with her in them. Um, there was like one from his desk uh, while he was working from home. Um, yeah. So there's been a few things. But we've we haven't seen any dinosaurs. This is this is all we've really seen is this kind of imagery here. So it's interesting to say to see that the first four weeks that they put to film were mostly sequences with dinosaurs in them. Uh, yeah, that's kind of surprising because that's not what I expected. Um, and no, and I think it's it's interesting as well because obviously they've come out and said that most of the um, kind of big crowd sequences have been shot now. Um, so if that's with dinosaurs, then that suggests that that's all of the big crowd sequences we're going to see with dinosaurs. And in many ways, that kind of surprises me because I would expect them to want to incorporate more spectacle with just the nature of the third film being on the mainland now. Yeah, I'm trying to parse out this this quote a little bit even more. You know, I don't want to sit here and say like, oh, they filmed all the dinosaur sequences. It just <laughs> yeah, seems it's you all know, done. <laughs> it's all done. Two weeks. Uh, all it took. <laughs> yeah, they they at least filmed mostly dinosaur stuff. So, you know, the humans were, I guess, the secondary portion of this sequence. So I don't know what they yeah. filmed. But um, uh, but it is interesting that they filmed out in snowy locations and this stuff was mostly dinosaur sequences. So that's kind of cool. That gives you an idea as to maybe what you can expect uh, from this movie. I don't know if that was necessarily... It seems like it, it was a VFX, right? So they said, so it allowed us to get a head start on the VFX. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean not animatronic, but, uh, no. you know, it could just be, you know, we had an animatronic and we're overlaying some stuff on there. So that's that could be something. Or it was just like, let us let me film this empty shot of snow and throw in some dinosaurs. So that could be a possibility as well. Um, but whatever it was, it allowed them, I guess, to get some some work done uh you know without the pressure of a looming deadline I, I don't know i don't really understand that portion of the statement because like no matter what that deadline has always been there like they, they hadn't they haven't yeah. changed it you said that like so i don't really yeah I, it, there's there's going to be a deadline so who knows what he meant by that yeah i think it's yeah it's interesting because like you say that deadline's always been the same so i guess maybe they're feeling a little bit more pressure because the deadline hasn't been moved um but we'll we'll just have to wait and see what happens i mean it's not out of the realm of possibility that it could still be moved i know today we had um the halloween sequel that announced that it was moving to 2021 so it is still possible at universal can move it later on in the production yeah yeah that's fair um yeah it's just universal made so many moves that i just assumed that they would have done it a little bit earlier but um yeah you know maybe they kind of want to see where this thing is going uh what it's going to look like uh you know within the next several months uh because we had assumed this this was starting back in february was it is, is that when it started late february yeah. and we kind of thought it would maybe go till july august somewhere in that range so what is that? February, uh, March, April, May, June, July. So let's say seven months. So they got maybe one month out of the way, right? Yeah. <laughs> maybe. So <laughs> what, what What month is it now? It's July. So all right. So July, August, September, October, November. So, I mean, they could wrap it up before the end of the year and maybe have a good idea where that puts them by June. Um, you know, I don't know if they can finish it or not, but they can at least have an idea so they can say like, eh, we should probably move it. It's too much work. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I think it's possible. I just think we're going to have to wait and see what happens because obviously it's stressful circumstances as it is going back to work currently. So mm -hmm. the last thing you want is for all of the crew to feel like they've got to work on a tight deadline because that's not going to do anyone any good. Yeah, so there's also... um some information not not too much else i don't think here but um he also did say that i'm confident our guidelines will keep us safe the hard part will be constructing a creative environment with all the precautions once the cameras roll we have to forget our world and live in the world of the movie that may take some practice that's kind of interesting because like we've 
for the past several months, whether we realize it or not, like we've been, we've been like redeveloping ourselves and thinking differently. So it might be interesting to see how those yeah. actors and, and the cast and crew and everybody uh, change their ideals in their head when they're trying to film, like they might not get too close to somebody or, and they have to try to forget that kind of mentality, I guess, when it comes to filming. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, not that we're going to really see yeah. much of that, but. As no, I think it will be interesting. I just hope that it, obviously there's a balance there and hopefully it doesn't impede too much on the way that these um, actors perform their characters. Yeah. Uh, again, following here, it says, I've been really moved by the way everyone has shown support for each other. We're all fired up to get back to work. This is what we do, and we're all eager to get back out there and do it. Okay, so that's kind of like the messaging I expect from here on out. It's it's not going to be like, I, I didn't feel safe whatsoever on that set. Like that was, don't tell anybody, but this is yeah. not good. This is really bad. Uh, somebody coughed all over me every day. Um, not saying who, Chris Pratt, but everybody coughed all over me. Um so you're not going to hear that kind of stuff, but like, um, this is the messaging I think we're going to get from here on out. Everybody's safe. Everything's all good. So it's going to be hard to decipher what the actual feeling is on set. But um, yeah, that was about it. I think that was all that really came from that article there. So yeah. uh, um, anything else that's kind of caught your eye as far as... Um, you know, the start of this production, because, you know, it's it started production sometime last month. Uh, we hadn't I don't think we really heard too much about that. And then the filming uh, supposedly started this week. I, I know a lot of people were reporting it was the seventh. Uh, right. Today's yeah. the eighth. Um, yeah, I know Monday. I know it said that the filming was going to take place on the week of the seventh. So I don't know if that necessarily meant Monday or not. Um, but uh, yeah. So have you seen anything else that you're kind of interested in or without spoiling anything? <laughs> I think that, yeah, it's mainly our next topic that kind of covers that. I think um, it's interesting that at this point we have seen more official material from Jurassic World Dominion which is still a year out than we have from Camp Cretaceous. So I was thinking about this the other day. Camp Cretaceous, we've seen one poster and one trailer. Jurassic World Dominion, we've seen something like three photos, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. They've been, you know, from that start, they, they were pretty forthright with, you know, shooting out images, official images, which, you know, I don't necessarily consider those spoilers at all, um, unless they, like, make a slip and they really... <laughs> They really messed something up. Yeah. Um, you it's know, like but... Chris Pratt dying in the background. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You had to say it. Um, you know, Frank Marshall <laughs> did something similar to that, though. Didn't he write something like hashtag Indoraptor or something last time? And like nobody knew. I think so, yeah. I, I forget the exact details, but um, but yeah. So they, they do slip every now and then. But most of the stuff that comes out of there, I'm like, all right, this is fine. Everything's good. Uh, I'm not too worried about that, but, um, but yeah, so, but recently there has been with, with any production for Jurassic, I feel like this, I don't know why, but you follow other franchises, right? So do you see the, the spoilers mm -hmm. coming out in mass like you do for Jurassic? Cause I follow a few as well and I don't necessarily, um, see as much as, as, as blatant, uh, spoiler posting as I do in this community, unfortunately. No, I mean, um, the best kind of parallel I can think is Avengers Endgame. And I remember when um, Endgame was being shot, there were a few set photos of uh, Tony in his shield equipment. Um, and that was yeah. about it. Um, and I, I remember that was a complete like 180 on what actually happened in the film because it showed that he had like the holographic briefcase with him and then it never appeared in the film anyway. Um, so that's kind of like the only parallel I've got, but I think in Jurassic, for whatever reason, they just seem to let a lot more slip under the radar. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a mixture of them just being like, I don't know, lax around the set. Um, but also, yeah, the fact that you mentioned the, the Avengers too, like, I remember I was actually like in between on like wanting to look at stuff. I'm like, I really yeah. want to see. I really want to see what they're doing with this specific set in Avengers, but I also don't want it to be spoiled for me. So I would actually search it out. I had to find the images, you know, yeah, like it wasn't just same. like, Hey, it's on my timeline. Here it is. Um, and I feel like with Jurassic, 
unfortunately, it's just like they're on your timeline and you have no control over it. So it's it's slightly annoying. Um, I at in my point like right here, I can't really stay away from them uh, because they're just in my face all the time. But um, and for discussion purposes, <laughs> it's kind of interesting to have to weave in and out. And plus, we do end up talking about some spoilers at the end of the show, just in case they do pop up. Um, we, we save those for like the very end after the credits. You know, you, you don't have to hear spoilers whatsoever unless you choose to. Um, but, yeah. you know, they're they're kind of always in my face no matter what. But I know a lot of people don't want to know anything. Whether, you know, sometimes it's even those official images that are shared from Colin. They're like, no, I'm like, well, you can't really help that. You have to stop following the creator if you want, if you don't want to see that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it gets kind of bad. So just be forewarned, I guess, that, you know, it's that time again. Uh, there's going to be a lot of spoilers out there. And uh, whether it's supposed leaks or images or whatever the case may be, just keep your eyes peeled because uh, it's it's rough. Yeah. So. Yeah, there is a lot of stuff out there. I would say as well, like, in general, if you spoil, maybe just swerve some of the trailers, maybe watch the first trailer and make that it. Because I remember last time around, um, when they started doing all of the TV spots, I kind of went through a phase where I was like, oh, I've got to see all of them. And they basically pieced together most of the set sequences. Yeah. So I'm kind of debating being a little bit more... Um, on the fence with trailers and that kind of stuff this time around as well. I know. I'm in this weird place where I, I that that's what like kind of ruined the experience for me. Um, I won't say it like completely ruined Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom for me at the time, but when I came out of theaters, I was a little sour just because I had seen yeah. everything. So I, I don't really know what to do at this point because I I, I need to kind of report on this stuff and talk about it yeah. and kind of know what's going on, but also. I just don't want to have that experience where I come to the theater for Dominion and I'm like, ah, I already saw it. And, you know, it's uh, it's different from posting leaks and set photos and stuff like that. But, um, you know, these are official release things. And it's like you kind of trust that the official creators and, and everybody are not going to spoil the movie for you. But Universal has a tendency to just let it all out on the table, like whatever it is. You know, for these yeah. movies, for Fast and Furious and, and all, you know, all their franchises, they're just like, here you go. Here it is. Eat it this up. This is everything that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of annoying. But, um, yeah, you have to kind of judge your spoiler policy early on, especially in this community, because you just don't want something to come across your desk and be like, ah, oh, you know, like even recently. Um, well, this is like what, like six months now or something maybe um but that uh that's leaked synopsis that came out it's like yeah people we're sharing full-on like you know just typing retyping it out on twitter or wherever and then you start reading something on twitter not realizing what you're reading and it's like oh i just read the synopsis of this movie yeah i wish i didn't do that so you kind of like make it i now hard know to, that to owen grady's getting fused with a velociraptor yeah, now you know, guys. It's it's out there for everybody to know. Uh, it's your fault if you're sitting here listening to this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting. We did just have three people dip out. I wonder if they thought that was real. <laughs> ah, you ruined it, man. The stream's <laughs> over. Well, it, yeah, Came I mean, it's over, inter- man. Came over. <laughs> it's interesting because you brought up like Camp Cretaceous before, and yeah. you know, you kind of joked about how we don't have anything for that. So it's like, I don't know, like you got to kind of toe the line between, I don't want anything whatsoever revealed at all. Or, you know, you want some stuff and, and I know they haven't like tiptoed at all with, with um, Camp Cretaceous. It's like, we're just not going to give you anything. It's just going to be this one teaser that doesn't necessarily yeah. feels like it fits in with anything. And then some like an image and that's it. And then you have to decipher stuff from toys um, and then even then, yeah. you know, creators are like, well, those aren't the final things. Those are not the final images or whatever. They might not look like that. Um, and then you have to look at the back of those images, the back of the boxes. And you're like, wow, is the art style going to be that cool? Because that looks awesome. Yeah. So who knows? Actually, like, you don't know what you're dealing with. I was going to say, when we get onto toys, I will dip out a camera quickly because I think I've got the packaging for the indominus just on my right and that's definitely something that's worth taking a look at that has 
Does it have and that cool hint. like camp style vibe on the yeah. back there? Yeah, let me to grab it now. I'll go grab it if you want. Yeah, might as well go over there. Um, in the meantime, I guess I'll I'll discuss. We'll, we'll move on to the toys um, since we're discussing that. But I have um, one that was sent to me, which you guys I don't know if you saw it or not, but the link is uh, in the description below. But um, we actually were sent Dennis Nedry here in the Barbasol can. So I have, it's pretty big. Like that is massive. I actually think, do I, oh, I don't still have it over here. I used to have some Barbasol cans over there, but this is like way bigger than that. Um, but it's cool. Cause it has this like twisty, like you can't see on the back, but it twists there. So it has like, <laughs> there's a bunch of like funny directions and shaving tips and stuff. Not like legit stuff, like funny stuff. Um, and then you twist it and it reveals Dennis, Dennis Nedry in there. And, uh, didn't you didn't word. say the magic word. I totally unappreciated my time. Dodson. Dodson. We got Dodson here. here. So I love this thing I'm so much. And I think there's one more. It's so cool. I, they yeah. did such a good job with it. Yeah, it's so awesome. The, the lighting in I'm, there is I'm really sorry, cool. I'm to get my hands on it. It's super awesome. Like just the detail is, is great. And, you know, I wouldn't say it's not really cheap or anything. I think it's pretty like it's like a hard cardboard i guess and then this stuff up here is all plastic yeah. so it feels pretty legit obviously it doesn't feel like a barbasol can because it's not like a metal can and dennis just fell over in there so sorry buddy uh <laughs> but one thing i one little interesting thing that kind of uh was annoying was well, once i get it out i don't know see this is the i never know which way i'm supposed to be turning this and if it's going to open all right i guess that means i'm turning it the wrong way i don't know because it's only saying one thing all right, Dennis. Come on. Oh, there it is. Right, yeah, I get it, man. Okay, I didn't say the magic word. Please. I, do, um, I was just going to say quickly, I really <laughs> like the way that that in, like, insert works because mm -hmm. I could picture them doing a kind of like three and three quarter inch almost amber collection with that kind of style where you get like, like this, this wraparound base for the figures. Yeah, I think it's yeah. really nice. Yeah, it's nice. I mean... It's just like some nice like Hawaiian backdrop or Costa Rican backdrop or something like that. It looks pretty cool. It's not got pyramids uh, at least. Is that something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it does not. Um, but uh, one thing that was kind of annoying was the the Barbasol can itself, which I don't even know if this will come out, but like it's really blown yeah. out. But you can see the can there. It's very tiny. This is a, a very small figure. Um, it would not stay in his hand. Like I got it to stay in the hand the first time, but it took me several tries. And then yeah. after that, I was never never able to get it back in. And I was, like, trying to film my review, and it was just falling all over the place. Almost lost it, like, six times. So I actually took some, like, sticky tack stuff and just put it in his hand to hold yeah. the barbasol can. So hopefully that's uh, – hopefully that will uh, think... not ruin it or stay in there or whatever. So It's interesting because they could have easily done something a bit different. So obviously they didn't want to ruin the aesthetic of the Barbasol can. Yeah. But with other products like that, they probably would have had a presentable side and then the other side would have had like a grip. So it's easier mm -hmm. for the figure to hold it. Yeah. Yeah. Some things will have like a little um, pin, you know, and then the hand yeah. maybe will have like a pin hole in it so you can like put it in there. And uh, yeah. yeah, but, but no, this is actually like it legit had not – exactly to a t this but it was pretty like legit there was a ton of tiny lettering on there the detail on yeah. that can is awesome um so this is just like an amazing item and i'm interested to see what happens next he's gonna start talking again um but you know you you've been keeping an eye an eye on like this toy and and its release and mattel mm -hmm. and what they've been doing All right dennis um the mattel creations thing right isn't that uh What's going on with that? Because we've seen them talk about this as far as like, hey, this is going to be something. Keep your eyes out here. What are you kind of expecting from that? I'm really hoping that it's a way for them to kind of bring products to us that wouldn't necessarily make it on store shelves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time we hear from retailers, they will say, well, we'd like to give you more humans, for example, but they don't sell. I'm really, really hopeful that this will be a direct platform where they can have a conversation with collectors and say, what do you want? How much would you be willing to pay for it? What kind of volumes do we need to make? Because I think that would be a really good way for us to get maybe characters from the Lost World 
in-gen vehicles could be quite cool um, and all that kind of stuff that the legacy collection really should have hit on but never quite managed to get into its stride enough to do so I think there's potential for all that kind of stuff and hey I'm just saying I vote we all crowdfund a three and three quarter inch visitor center playset. Let's do oh it. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> so like you, you don't mean like they should have a Mattel community outreach. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I saw you laughing midway through and I was like, he's come up with something. <laughs> yeah, because like you, the, yeah. the what you were talking about, like a place to kind of discuss yeah. what's going on. Like that's what that, there, there, if, if you didn't understand the reference, there was this Instagram account that popped up today i think or, or recently uh -huh. and it, it said mattel yeah mattel community outreach and like it was following some jurassic people um and then it's gone right it's gone now right so yeah. we you know you found out that it was not legit it didn't look like it was legit but we wanted to confirm that right so you got yeah. that nailed down so um but mattel creations yeah that's a different thing so I'm kind of and like that is on, legit. We promise. Yeah. Oh, that is. Yeah. And I'm kind of on board with your your idea there with the at the beginning where you said like, you know, a place where you can kind of buy things that are not necessarily available yeah. or whatever. I I want it to be a place where you can just buy everything. And I've had discussions with them about this before about like you know make a central hub where people can get your stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it it would be a beautiful thing, you know. Um, and I, I guess it's kind of hard to do that with exclusive rights, you know, between targets and Walmarts and entertainment earth and all this stuff. But at some point or another, you have to be able to let this stuff be available. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I would think, um, and it would just be amazing. Like to have, to have no question as to like where you can buy this thing or, or where it should be available and to, to not think as a collector, like, well, that thing's available in. Uh, Mexico or somewhere because you you know we've seen a lot of toys like specifically go there or something and we're like well I'll never see that I guess because you know it didn't it didn't get released here but then you know everybody in Mexico is like well I guess I'm not going to see that thing because it's only in in the states yeah. so um, I mean a good example the Legacy Spinosaurus I literally ordered one to keep in box last night but obviously you guys over in the US have had a really difficult time getting it because the distribution mm -hmm. is just all over the place with all these different products and i think it's interesting because i've heard um in the past a lot that mattel were apparently working on a new website that was going to have an international storefront at some point um but obviously that's never materialized but I, d I do wonder if maybe we're actually in a position now where it's more possible than ever before um because obviously that news story broke a while back didn't it that us um not us um universal had been deliberately kind of focusing on the US market. And in doing that, it had actually broken some like trade laws internationally where other countries couldn't get a hold of their products. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that because of that, if it opens up a little bit more now, then maybe Mattel are going to be able to give everything the same sort of universal treatment. That was not a deliberate part. <laughs> I didn't mean to use the word universal there to describe that. Yeah, I was like, wait, what do you mean? So, the... <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I got you. But, um, <laughs> Hopefully, I, I mean, we'll see. Uh, I, I would be very excited for, you know, things to be available on there. And I know something like uh, you, you mentioned the Spinosaurus. That's been, you know, a conversation piece for years now, I feel like, or two, however long, two or three years. Um, and somebody in the chat said, oh, is that Tom Jurassic? And yes, that is. That is yeah. uh, the <laughs> famous Tom <laughs> Jurassic. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, the Spinosaurus and stuff like it would be nice to have a place where you can feel confident, at least, you know, uh, the yeah. uh, Charlie uh, Amber collection piece, which is one that was like odd for a bit. It was like, we don't know what's going on. They've never like officially talked about this thing in any capacity. <laughs> and uh, oh, no, my son's running around upstairs, which means I'm probably going to get ambushed at any point. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> It, it's available at Big Bad Toy Store or Toy Shop, um, but um, it's one of those things that like comes and go, and you kind of never know where you should be able to get things like that. So it would be nice to have a place where you're like, all right, I can order, you know, Delta and Echo through there coming up soon. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, Del Delta is that yeah. one that pop that that's the most recent one that pop up, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, Delta's the one that's popped up. We've not seen an Echo anywhere yet. But yeah, it's I, 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 at this yeah. point we're gonna get one. I would assume so. I still think. So go, going back to Mattel Creates for a second, 
let's say for example it's a bit like hasbro pulse there's some potential mm -hmm. to do some <laughs> steve has just absolutely minced me with that comment um, <laughs> there is the potential to do some really really fun stuff there where you could have like larger scale exclusives uh -huh. so if we're getting all of the raptor squad I really do want to get a six inch scale Owen figure in his Jurassic World attire with the motorbike. I think that would just be perfect for a shelf to have like the four Raptor squad members and him on the bike. Yeah, that um, would be awesome. So I think, yeah, I think that Mattel Creations could be an avenue for stuff like that. And I mean, if you yeah. start to get that audience who will invest in that, something like, oh my God, somebody thought he was serious. Um, then something like a six inch Jeep <laughs> isn't necessarily impossible. So I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, yeah, you're right. I, I have a hard time laughing here, but, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think that would be an awesome place because we've heard, you know, the stories that, you know, retailers, which everybody blames Mattel um, for things not coming forward, but it's, it's mostly the retailers that are saying like, we don't want yeah. these things. Um, for instance, humans and how outspoken is the Jurassic community when it comes to wanting human figures? We all want every figure. We're getting one a year now, it seems like. But um, we would like more than that. So if they were to say, you know, well, yeah, we're only going to release – or not only, but we're, we'll release these humans only on our website um, in, in some sort of package. I mean, we've seen that package uh, from Collect Jurassic floating around with um, – uh, Hammond and Ellie and the banner and the two Raptors stuff like that you know pack packs of things or even just individual it would be cool to see things that you can't necessarily buy at Target or Walmart or you know your stores over there but like on their website a safe place yeah. where you can buy them and not worry about it so yeah I agree with that I'm just gonna say see you later Jurassic Host have a good one man take it um, easy yeah I think I think that's the thing we need a storefront <laughs> that's easily accessible but also is international. Because, I mean, I, I was saying to mm. Tim the other day, so obviously, um, you'll know Brad, but anyone watching won't. Tim actually helps me get quite a few of the products that don't come out here. And we haven't got the wave of the Ornithalestes yet. So that is the first attack pack wave for this year. Hasn't even come out here. So it's, it's just... The way that's, you look at like the product disparity is so weird. <laughs> that's the first time that dinosaur's name has been said correctly on this podcast. I'm assuming. I don't know. Are, I, are you I proud of me? <laughs> <laughs> My I'm face is like, oh. Host mantle. <laughs> that sounded so good because I've said ornithalestes. <laughs> yeah, every time. Um, uh, what's that other one? That, uh, oh, it was like a gray figure. It looked like a ostrich. Or something like that. You remember that it had like yellow feet? Oh, the Monomachus. Yeah, man. I've never seen that. I, yeah. I've never seen that one. Uh, I, I've I... seen people's collections and I'm like, there it is. What's it doing there? I've never seen it. Um, a lot of figures I've never seen here. So I know everybody's complaining about distribution, but like it is worse in some areas, but it's not good everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's all over the place. Somebody says, does anyone yeah, else have the really epic is. roaring T Rex? Uh, no, I do not. Um, I, I, Brad, you left it. I you left, left it. it on the store shelf. <laughs> I, yeah, I did a video on it the other day, but, uh, and I went back and I, I saw it again, but there was like maybe four less. So they, they were, I guess, flying off the shelves. But, um, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's just one that I'm not necessarily like sold on. I don't really know. Um, Brad's logic here is. is if he doesn't buy it straight away, he can make it appear in another toy hunt video. <laughs> What, what's that? What's that? <laughs> come here. I can't hear you. Come, come over here. <laughs> you knocked the dinosaur park over. Yeah. Oh, come here. <laughs> this is two live streams in a row that have been disrupted at this point, guys. <laughs> he knocked so you the can dinosaur. See, this is an acceptable disruption. <laughs> you see Tom there? Can you say hi, Tom? Hey. Can you say hi? <laughs> What, can you say what happened? You you did what? <laughs> Tell me, what happened? Uh, I knocked over the dinosaur park. Uh, where oh. upstairs or downstairs? Upstairs. We have multiple levels of dinosaur parks. Upstairs. Upstairs. <laughs> what happened to it? Did you just step on it or? Yeah, I just stepped on it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll help you fix it in a little bit. What what kind of dinosaur do you want in there? Mm. What kind of dinosaur do you want in your dinosaur park? <laughs> 
Nothing? Uh. Um. <laughs> that was upstairs. Yeah, it was upstairs. It's downstairs now. The ironic is thing is, guys, this is more interesting than half our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy, you're going to go back upstairs? <laughs> I got to finish up here? Okay? Okay? If I let you have this in front of this live stream, everybody would be like, no, don't let him go. Walk away with that. All right, bye, buddy. Can you say bye? Can you say bye? No? Okay. Right. I have the headphones. Yeah. Why? Sorry, I hear what they're saying. All right, so I'm back. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, I'm going to get us straight back on track with this. Oh, too bad it's mostly green and we can't see it because of the background. <laughs> Can you not? What if no, I, like... it's like indivisible. In- indivisible. Invisible. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, I, Yeah, I don't. Hold on. You might. Yeah, you're going to see some on my floor now. Great. Can you see any of that? <laughs> no, just don't even bother, man. It's bad. <laughs> you got okay, it. You so... got us right back on track. What's up, buddy? Come over here. It was that dinosaur. What dinosaur? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't see it. Yeah. I oh. don't think we're getting back on track at this point. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, what? Uh, oh, yeah. Talk about your, your uh, Indominus, too, because you have that. Yeah. So I'm going to hold it here so you can no, see no, it. Back, so this is the Feeding Frenzy Indominus Rex. Um, it's very, very similar to Primal Pal Blue. So if anyone's got that, it's... Uh, very very similar to kind of that product in terms of the market is designed for you get a little bit of kind of like he just went, he just dinosaur went food with it hold on wait what <laughs> i said keep doing your review he just ran away crying so let me go see. Bad, just... <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so um yeah i am holding it you can't see it but what i'm gonna do is kind of give you guys some of the sound effects i guess because you can hear those you can't see it um there you go so I don't know if you can see that or if it's fading out, um, but it's a pretty interesting figure. You can feed it. The eyes light up as well, which is pretty, pretty cool. And um, it's got some decent articulation going. But apart from that, it's kind of very much a kid's product. So there's a lot of kind of unsightly marks on it and stuff like that. But it's not bad. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it obviously if you've got kids and you want them to get into jurassic then it's something quite fun for them to play with and it's definitely kind of akin to velociraptor blue and the primal pal figure so it's quite cool but yeah um what i'm gonna do <laughs> thank you dave sounds great probably doesn't look great you probably can't see it um yeah let's let, let's have a chat guys while brad isn't here what's going on how's everyone doing let's take a look can I see the Indominus? Hopefully you saw it, Kevin. Uh, if not, the review that I've done on it is linked in the description. I wish Mattel made a Primal Pal Spino. Um, a Primal Pal Spino would be quite cool, actually. In this kind of scale, I could see it working quite well. Uh, I think it could be quite cute, especially if it used some of the kind of aesthetics that the uh, Snap Squad one has used, because I think that's cool. Uh, do I wish for some new Indoraptor figures? I mean, a Amber Collection scale Indoraptor would be quite cool. I don't know how much that would cost, but it would be quite cool to maybe see that. And you could include the rifle as an accessory with that figure, and you could then give that rifle to Owen. So, yeah, it would be cool. Brad, welcome back. What are we talking about here? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I've just started going through the comments because I didn't know if anyone could even see the Indominus or if it was phasing out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, yeah. So I didn't. I didn't get an idea. I'm sure you said it already. Do you, Do you like that thing overall, or is it something you're like you don't really understand that line? Because I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say like I don't really understand like the primal pal and the feeding frenzy like that scale of figure yeah. and what it's for. Um, you you into it? What do you think? So for me personally, it's not the kind of thing I would normally buy. Mm -hmm. But I think for a kid, so say, for example, for Link, this is exactly the kind of thing that kids are going to want to play with because it's like it's big, it's chunky, you can hear it makes noises. It's kind of, it takes all of the boxes for something that I think people would 
like to play with. And I mean, it's the kind of thing that I could see myself playing with as a kid because I can like throw it around and it's not yeah. going to take any damage. I'm kind of looking at it now and making sure I've not chipped the paint doing that. <laughs> it's, um, it's broken now. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, it very much goes back into what Mattel said when they originally created the line, which was having something for every play pattern. And I think this mm -hmm. kind of shows that they're still trying to experiment with it. So yeah. it's cool in its own right. I, I will say that kid that was just in here, <laughs> he absolutely loves uh, Primal Pal Blue. And it's like, it's yeah. one that I got for him um, back when it came out, whenever that was. Uh, when was that? Like last summer or something like that? Um, yeah. And he, did, he wasn't really into it back then. But now that he's like almost three, it's like it's one that he loves and he actually like talks to it. He, he brings it around. It's part of, and you just heard, he was talking about his dinosaur park upstairs, which I just let him go away with. Um, I, I let him bring a sarcosuchus and, uh, Owen, like the pull, you mean, you know, those pull cord, uh, yeah. racer things like, uh, I, yeah, yeah. So him on the bike, I let him take that upstairs too. So, um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, he loves primal pal blue. It, the scale is like all over the place in his little dinosaur park, but he loves yeah. that figure. It's, it's one that he, he likes like how it moves around, how it talks to him and stuff. And, and he like understands it somehow when it's happy and sad. And I don't know how, but he gets it. <laughs> yeah. So I imagine he would like that one too. Yeah. I think primal pal blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do think, uh, I mean, we were talking about it earlier over message, but Primal Pal Blue perhaps has got a little bit um, more in the way of articulation and stuff like that. And you can kind of do a lot more with her. Like mm -hmm. she's a lot more poseable. And I think if I was a kid playing, I'd find it a little bit easier. Whereas this figure's a little bit rigid. Um, yeah, so because yeah. it's got so many electronic features built into it, the middle of it's kind of like quite static and it doesn't feel like it's got as much posability as that. I mean, you literally, I don't know, can you see it if I hold it against my shirt? Oh yeah, you can see it fine. Yeah, yeah. so yep. you literally snap the tail up to lock the drawer open and hold, that's maybe kind of the amount of play you get with it. And then you, you kind go. of like <laughs> put your finger in or put the piece of food in. And then it will shut the jaw. So that is pretty much the play pattern you get with it. And then the yeah. legs move, but they're on ratchet joints. And the yeah. arms move as well. That's kind of it. So yeah. it's yeah, it's nice. It's just kind of I feel like it's a step down from Primal Pearl Blue in some ways. That's what it that's what it felt like to me. I got to see it at New York Toy Fair and I was just a little confused. I didn't have much time to play around with it. And I, I certainly didn't have time yeah. to like learn and figure out what this thing is supposed to be doing. Um, I saw that like that piece of meat and I was like, okay, this is cool. It fits right into the mouth perfectly. It actually, I, I like looked at it. I'm like, there's no way this is going to stay in there, but it actually stays in uh, pretty well. And uh, I thought it was fun and cute looking, but yeah, I just didn't understand what it was like, what the main play features were. So it was kind of a little uh, confusing for me, but yeah. I think either way, uh, once I once we get the hang of it, he would definitely love that. Um, and yeah. and I see that uh, James and Steve are gonna steal everything that I have here. So uh, <laughs> yeah. you guys like my mug, my uh, Spaceship Earth mug, very cool. Actually, which I mean, you guys might <laughs> you're probably gonna want to steal this too then because it's a uh, it's a plant Spaceship Earth. <laughs> oh, can you even oh, see the plant? Cool. Oh, the I plant like is that. disappeared. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, okay. it's disappeared for everyone else, but I can see it. So yeah, you can, you can see it. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, and I'm sure you're, you're going to steal looks this too. It guys, so. I promise. <laughs> um, um, so James did ask, what's my favorite toy that I haven't got? And um, obviously, hmm. Brad, you were talking about perhaps missed opportunities. So yeah. that leads nicely into something I put on my Twitter earlier today. Which Ooh, is the that? fact that originally oh, yeah, yeah. in 2015, yeah, um, the Jurassic World Jeep set that we got, if anyone's familiar with that, the one that came with the Dilophosaurus and the Gyrosphere, was originally going to include JP29. So it was going to be a Jurassic Park Jeep. Um, mm. Yeah, I cannot understand why they made the decision to change that. It makes no sense to me because that would have sold. Uh, you know, I don't even know what the what it actually turned into. Okay, here it is. I see it here. Um, me... Oh, I yeah, was going to go I, grab it, but you wouldn't have been able I've, to see it. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be able to see what the original, uh, in, or yeah. no, what the released version was. This is the one that was the, the Jurassic World Jeep with the Dilophosaurus, right? Um, yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, and and in in the one that you were sharing around, it was actually just like a Jurassic Park Jeep and a Velociraptor, right? So yeah, yeah man, so, that would have that would have been really cool to see. Uh, but it's understandable why I guess they released the version they did. Um, but yeah, you know, at the same time, you could actually make an argument for that one too. So not too far yeah. off. I think it's just it's strange. So um, that set was always going to have Dilophosaurus. If you look at the packaging, it's branded as a Dilophosaurus. They had mm. just put the Velociraptor in as a stand-in, okay. so okay. it looks like everything was going to be the same apart from the Jeep, which was going to be the Jurassic Park one. Mm. And interestingly, I was talking to Jurassic Collectibles after, and he said that at Toy Fair in 2015, they were showing off the Jurassic Park Jeep version. So this was at the time where things like the Indominus Rex paddock, for example, that had the final design for that set. So it sounds like this changed very late in the production for some reason, and I can't work out why. Huh. Um, let me try to bring this up here so we can at least see what, uh, we're all talking about here where my images go. Okay. Here's a, cause it is worth noting. It's very, very similar to the actual build we have in the set as it is just obviously with different colors. Yeah. And, and honestly, I know I said it just a minute ago, but like, um, making a case for the, uh, Jurassic park Jeep one, you could actually make a better case for that one to exist than, the one that actually was released with the um yeah with the Dilophosaurus because like it's not like we ever got a Dilophosaurus in Jurassic World but we do have raptors and we do have the Jurassic Park Jeep and gyrospheres so that that would have made a little bit more sense so let me bring this up here for everybody to see what you're talking about um here is uh Tom's tweet um I think you can see the tweet. Yeah, partially. Um, but there it is. So that is a pretty awesome looking set. Uh, and you did say it says Dilophosaurus, despite having uh, that raptor uh, image there. Yeah. Um, comes with gray and ACU trooper. But yeah, this is awesome. Like that that Jeep looks fantastic. Um, and how so does it compare? Say, it's just I, different. Um... It's like the same, but different colors. You're missing uh, yeah. like the launchers on top. And the lighting is a little yeah. bit different. But outside of that, it's not too drastically different, right? It's, it's pretty much the exact same build. So what I actually did, and I should have sent you a screenshot, Brad, I um, have now made this in LEGO Digital Design as best I can. So mm -hmm. I have the original uh, LDD file for the Jeep that we got, the blue one that you've got on screen. Uh -huh. um, and I looked at it and was comparing them. And literally all you have to do is remove the big headlights they put on, reposition a couple of the grill pieces, um, change one of the pieces on the side, add a couple more red bits, yeah. and it is literally the Jurassic Park model. So they were so close to it that it feels like they made some really minor changes last minute. And I, I guess that they might have changed it because of... Um, the ACU Trooper, I was talking to Michael uh, Carroly, I think it is, earlier, uh, the awesome Owen cosplayer, and he oh, yeah. was saying, well, it wouldn't make much sense for uh, an ACU Trooper to be driving a Jurassic Park Jeep, and I get <laughs> that, but when has LEGO ever made sense, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, this this just screams to me like like uh, Universal just saying, no, 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 no. We're not gonna be. We're not gonna be pushing yeah. Jurassic Park. You know, no, we don't want that. We want everybody to talk about Jurassic World. So we're gonna be doing the blue one. That's what we want. We want the yeah, blue. That's what we, I we, think. You well. know, we don't. We don't want the old one. Even though that it is in the movie and, and it does make a little bit more sense. It's just no. We just want to kind of move away from that, like they did with yeah. you know all their branding. Everything that they branded changed. Um, and and now I guess we're kind of seeing a re, a little resurgence of this with. Uh, within the past year or so, even, you know, like with uh, the John Hammond exclusive toy and now Dennis Nedry yeah. coming out. And, uh, and of course, well, that literally. that vision of, of Dominion. Yeah. So. So, yeah, I feel like uh, we're, we're kind of heading in that direction. Yeah. And, and the original trio coming back. So it would be nice to get this branding back. And, and you know, I you made one of these, right? They, they haven't yeah. released anything like this but didn't you make one similar or something? I did make one. I would go and grab it, but it's quite far away. But yeah, I um, I found the Lego digital design file for the Jurassic Park game one. So Jurassic World, the game, um, the designs are a lot smaller, a lot more kind of size accurate. 
and I made one of them. Um, but the issue with that was it used a lot of rare parts. So it sent me back about £70 for that small model. So it, it wasn't oh, man. worth the cost of it. <laughs> yeah, but if you were to make something like this, I can tell you just from looking at it, because obviously I'm really into my Lego, um, a lot more of the parts on this model are quite easily massable for the most part. So I think this is the kind of model where you could easily like make... Um, two or three Jurassic Park Jeeps just based off of the original model and changing the colours a bit. So yeah. I may very well have to throw a digital design file out for people to download and have a play with. Yeah, I uh, let me just bring this up here because I I think you you did a review on this one, right? This uh your the yeah. Jeep that you're talking about. You did a review on your own toy. Uh, <laughs> here it is. I got a I got an <laughs> yeah. image of it there. Uh let me just bring that up so you can see it a little bit bigger. But um yeah, I mean that looks pretty cool. I love it. Yeah, I love it. it looks awesome. Yeah, I like it. It's because it's a lot smaller and a lot more condensed. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit fragile, so um, oh, okay. the fenders on the front tend to fall off quite often. But beyond that, it's like, like, like I say, it's somebody else's design, so it's not my design, and I don't want to take any credit for that. I literally true, just got true. the parts and made it. Um, yeah, but it's it's so spot on to the design that you see in the game and it surprises me in some ways that lego haven't done more of that because i mean in that game we've got um the jurassic world mercedes 4x4 you've got the mercedes sprinter van you've got a build for barry's atv you've got the jurassic world safari truck there's then all of the in-gen vehicles from the lost world as well so there's so much potential to just take from that game alone you know mm -hmm. yeah I uh I don't know if I've played all the way through it. It's got to be to be <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> but uh you I'm, know me I'm and Lego. I'm, well, I'm like guys, it's my bedtime. <laughs> oh look, Tom's kid has just just come into the frame there. Um <laughs> <laughs> that would be a reveal and a half. <laughs> You'd be like, "Wait, what? Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> if anyone it would be my mom coming in telling me to keep the noise down. <laughs> Oh gosh. Well, you know, we we should probably cut this off here. Is there any uh, lingering thoughts here? I, um <clears throat> I was going to say I do very briefly want to touch on Universal Beijing uh, Beijing oh, even yeah. just because Sunny mentioned it and asked had we seen the first pics of the new Jurassic World dark ride? Mm -hmm. And I think it is worth noting that that is shaping up to look incredible. Yeah, yeah. I mean uh, for the past few years, they've been uh, building this thing and just uh, coming up with ideas for it. And everything that I've seen behind the scenes looks awesome. Um, and now it seems yeah. like these images are starting to come out. And uh, yeah, it's, it looks like what we've been saying kind of <laughs> for the past few years on the show is that it's going to be like a Transformers style ride. Um, Tom, I, you've never been to uh, Universal. so you, and, and they don't have anything. Yeah. OK, so they they have this this ride concept or this ride vehicle it's like transformers and you're in this uh yeah. this this i don't know it's just like a car it's called like a scoop uh that they call it in um spider-man so yeah it's just the same ride vehicle in those two rides and we're gonna see that now in um uh this ride and it's pretty like it's an amazing vehicle like it, it'll it'll make it re very be uh, a very believable experience for you um and we saw some of the stuff on the set which i won't go too deep into it and just in case but um it looks like it's gonna be cool and i overall that entire land looks incredible right now so i'd like to see some more detail but um but yeah so i'm excited for that one I am as well. I'm so hyped for the fact that, I mean, obviously having the aviary so close to the innovation center isn't mm -hmm. accurate to Jurassic World, <laughs> but the fact is you're literally going to be able to go there and like walk down Main Street is yeah. going to be so cool. And I mean, for me, like, you know, I keep saying I want to save up and come out to America next year, hopefully for the premiere and like hang out with you and everyone else. Yeah. But I think beyond that, the next thing I save up for is absolutely going to be going out to Beijing just to see this. Well, yeah, I think it's 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 the, the, the only comparison I can make is it makes me think of um, Pandora when that was first developed in terms of this like massive concept and actually bring in these gigantic scale things from screen to life in a real 3d format yeah i think that's probably a good comparison um the you know you could say the harry potter stuff too um but yeah. a lot of that is not necessarily 
comparable to like you know avatar even or, or jurassic because avatar and jurassic they're like just these big open world jungles kind of so you're not theming it to massive buildings per se um so yeah it'll be interesting to see how it all comes to life i wish it was like spot on from the movies but what are you gonna what are you gonna do you know they, yeah. they've done the best they can it's it's pretty close um it's gonna it's not gonna be you know it's not going to have all the stuff like main street has it'll have some restaurants, a lot of restaurants. I think there's like four or something like that in that land. Yeah. Um, there'll, there'll be a lot of restaurants and some shops and stuff, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see all that stuff come to fruition. And I think, I, I hope that, you know, by the time, you know, that opening comes, uh, hopefully I, I forget what they said. Um, maybe it was like April or something next year, 2021, like around that time. Yeah. Um, hopefully it'll be safe enough to go out there. Who knows? Um, but, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Cause I think, you know, this is going to be something we're living with for a while, these restrictions and guidelines and, and stuff that we have to follow. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see how theme parks look out, out that far. Um, and if it'll yeah. be safe to go out there and visit it. Cause I would love to go, uh, to, you know, that country and see multiple things, not just that park, but, um, that'll be awesome. So, it, you know, we'll have to keep an eye on it, but it's been pro progressing like insanely. The fact that you have like a mountain, the aviary, you've got the, the, uh, the visitor center, uh, or just, uh, innovation center. Um, there's a massive show building there. There's all kinds of stuff. It's going to be so cool. I'm so ready it for that is, thing. I, I can't wait. It's literally like, and the the way I best kind of compare it is, I imagine that is what it must have been like to be an extra when they shot the Main Street <clears throat> stuff at Six Flags. Just walking on and being yeah. immersed in like miles of this location must be so cool. Yeah, I wonder what would be more immersive, to be honest, uh, the theme park or that Main Street? Because the Main Street had probably the park, I would say <sighs> maybe it, it might be um main street had like everything there except for like you know the glass uh spire you know on the innovation center and stuff like that it didn't have that um but uh yeah this this park will not have all of main street so it's like you're kind of picking and choosing which one's more um uh immersive but uh I, yeah what does it say how many drinking I items do you have i have two i have two i have two steve i have you know this and I don't know. Do you want to steal my Jurassic World live tour cup too? And do you want to steal that? <laughs> and I do have another one right here too. This is a different drink, but this is empty. Um, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> gotta have some water. And that's that's the key to live streaming is you gotta have some like coffee and a water. So yeah, that's that's how I'm set up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, uh... just to kind of think up that it's gonna be awesome having the opportunity to go out and kind of immerse ourselves in this because obviously by the time it's ready um we'll be getting close to the point where dominion will release and mm -hmm. i know that more films are coming but none of us are certain what direction that's going to take the franchise in so sure. i think it's nice that we know at the very least we're going to have this thing to kind of experience and there's still something to look forward to um and yeah. james i am not usually straight vodka i am whiskey sir <laughs> 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 yeah as far as the parks go i you know it's kind of sad to see the disappearance of jurassic park you know kind of like we were talking about with those lego sets it's like no yeah. we're going to be sticking with the jurassic world brand and that's what it seems to be for a lot of these parks um beijing is going to be 100 percent jurassic yeah. world universal is now 100 percent jurassic world um islands of adventure in florida is 50 50 it's gonna be um they're they're almost done with their coaster you know they're finishing off this top hat right now so um looks like a great coaster still looks super ugly but um but yeah yeah it goes right in front of the vc now doesn't it um yeah and that yeah something i would say i think um and this this may be a bit of a controversial statement to end on but the jurassic world franchise is always going to be in the shadow of jurassic park and I think it is really, really important to not forget what makes the original so special. I mean, mm -hmm. that film did so much for the film industry. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Brad, we've got an interview coming out at some point with a special guest that goes into that a little bit more. Um, we do. But that film just... <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> um, that film just... Well, I do. Um, <laughs> that film just changed the way... You're like, if you're not going to release it, I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's going off with Tom Jurassic right now, lad. I'm loading in the background. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> what what I'm trying to get at is the fact that at the end of the day, we can build out this franchise. But that first film is what has made this for us. It has cemented this franchise's position and got it to where it is today. So it's not imp- it's not um, it, it's important not to forget that. And it's yeah. important to remember that ultimately this film comes from a very, very specific time where it stood out in the film industry and really made its mark. And I, I, I kind of don't want Universal to forget that, you know? I get that you want to move forward, you want to have momentum, you want to make money, but it never hurts to look back at your and remember where you came from. Yeah. Uh, to end here, Daniel asked, uh, what path do you follow with Dominion spoilers ahead? Uh, we actually did a, a big kind of discussion on this at the beginning of the show after the audio was not there for the beginning of the show. Um, but uh, we don't know. We don't really know. As as far as we know, we're not talking openly about spoilers. We're not showcasing images with spoilers. So, you know, try to do the best you can to think about other fans. That's all I say is just think about everybody else that doesn't necessarily want to see spoilers. That's what I try to do. Not sharing things, not talking about them openly. Um, that's That's what I'm thinking. But it's been fun, yeah, man. I agree. It's been yeah, fun. It what, do you, what do you say? Where can everybody find you online uh, as uh, we speak? Search for Tom Jurassic and hopefully I will pop up. But if not, I'm sure the other guy is just as great. What other guy? Who are you talking about? <laughs> oh, is there, is there a different I Tom mean, Jurassic? I... I, I was going to start my Twitter as Jurassic Tom way back in the day. But... Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, that's it. That's it, guys. I got nothing else to say. Find find us online. Just all the links are below. Go watch Tom's uh, video on the Indominus Rex uh, feeding frenzy Thank Indominus you. Rex. Uh, it's the the link is in the description below. Click that right now. Get off this feed. Uh, also, you'll find my uh, review of the Dennis Nedry and Barbasol can. Look on that. Uh, look for that on the channel as well. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, yeah thanks everybody it's been fun yeah why don't we uh go ahead and get out of here let me uh put up our images here and uh we'll we'll say goodbye to everybody for the time being so thank you tom for joining me yeah no worries it's been fun peace out everybody see you later